So we finished the V-clamp base, all its dimensioning, checked everything. We had to add a depth here that was different. We added a continuous feature symbol here. And we might have had to add a couple dimensions manually over here on our V-clamp. This one should be pretty straightforward, and I'm going to drag this input sheet over. So we need the dimensions, the dimensions that we put in. But notice that I've circled these in red. They are not the same precision, precision as two places to the right. They are actually, actually one. So we can loosen the precision too. So if I right click on this, retrieve model annotations. Let me bring this over here and get it out of the way. So I have my overall height. But all three of these came up good. Perfect. We have 0.33, 2.33, and 1. And I can put a quantity on this one. And I'm going to apply that. And then I'm going to go to this view. And what do I have? The only thing that I have, because this is symmetric, both left and right and top to bottom, and that hole is right in the center, we don't have X, Y dimensions. So I've marked those out on the input sheet over here. It's spotted. So I'm going to apply that one. Well, let's drag this out. Make sure you drag the endpoints because extrusions doesn't know where it starts and stops. It's like right from the center of the part. This one looks good. It's going over to the start or the tangency, and I see a break. I can bring these up. And maybe I want to bring this title down. Just make sure it doesn't touch the border. And anytime a dimension is close to text, that text box, that text box overrides it. Now I'm just going to select all these. Holding down control. And that one I have to keep a little bit further spaced out. Maybe these two. So I'm going to take these off and go to arrange these because it's going to pop them over this symmetry line. So just make sure that these are spaced out enough so that they're not overlapping each other. And go and center them. They look a little bit askew. Okay. So what do we have quantities on? We have some precision. We have quantity on this one. That's 2x on one side, therefore 4x overall. Home 2x space. And that's it. So I've got my 2x taken care of. I need my hole and thread note. But let's go. I can go ahead and do that now. So I have to select the visible line of that threaded hole. And it's half 13 UNC 2B. So you see how that could say, could say one half. Now I'm going to change my precision on these things. Notice that this comes all the way to the bottom, the 2.33. Goes to the bottom of the part. Doesn't start right here. And we have to have a center mark so that we can dimension from it. So let's drag that out to the end of the center mark. So we have that gap. The other gaps look good. This goes to one place. And hold down control this one. The depth and the 4.0, those four go to one place. The rest of them cannot because we, we did our dimension, our calculations by two places. Precision. To a single place. So now over here, I'm highlighting this off. Got that one, 3.8, 1. Got these two dimensions, a 0.33, the 2.33, 2.60, 3.06, and 4. And I've got my symmetry line. So now I have my drawings done. And make sure that you go over your input sheets. If you want the input sheet for this one, you can see that where I've made separate input sheets for each part. And it gives you the calculations on your input sheet to make your part by. 
Make sure your part numbers are correct. And when I save a drawing, I'm going to save it on sheet one so that that comes up first. I'm going to save this. And now I'm going to export it. And this is the first time that we're exporting as a multi-sheet DWF. So file, export to DWF, and we cannot do express. We're going to go to custom. And if you go over here to the drawing, we do not want the model. So you have to deselect the models. You want sheet one and sheet two. Deselect the models right here. And then I'm going to publish this. And it's going to publish to VClamp, and you can do a dash V if you want to do that for verification. And I want to show you what that looks like when it is finished. So if I go over here to my VClamp, I should have a DWF. And I want to make sure that both sheets are in there and no parts and no assemblies. It'll put the parts, the assemblies, everything in here. So it makes it a really big file. So it has two sheets. And if you look at the upper right, you can click to the next page. And then go back, review all your work before you submit for verification. I will be looking at every sheet for verification. Could I expand on the basis for different positions? You mean, why are we using different precisions? Okay, when we did our tolerance calculations for, and let me go to sheet two, for the fit of the V-clamp base inside the V-clamp, we did that assuming two-place precision, right? So we don't change the calculations that we did with two-place precisions. However, when we don't, we're not, we're not fitting the outside of this part inside something else. So we're, we're giving more tolerance. So the four has plus or minus 50 instead of plus or minus 20. Same thing with the height. Same thing with the fillets. So the size can change. But notice that these are sizes and their locations to the fit of the base inside here. So we came up with, we used two place dimension calculations from the base. And so we're keeping that precision here because if we didn't use the same precision that we used in our calculations, then they could make the parts incorrectly with too much uh, tolerance and then our parts still wouldn't fit. And I've gone through that whole tolerance calculation now that they still don't fit. Does that make sense? And then if I went over here to my artwork and I brought up the input sheet that I gave you guys with dimensions. And I'm just going to bring this over here. It's tiny. You can see that we have two place dimensions because that came from our calculations. And our tolerance calculations were all done in two places. So we have to stay with that precision or we've just messed up all of our talents, our, our um, tolerance analysis that we did to design the clamp to always fit around the base with 10 thousandths or 0 0.01 space, even at the worst case. The smallest clamp in the biggest base will always have 0 0.01 around it all the way around no matter what, because we've done the calculations based on two place tolerances. So we have to follow that when we put that in our drawings. Does that make more sense? So yeah, I had some, I had some input sheet stuff that had single place here. Those were not in our tolerance calculations, but the ones that I gave you the, um, the numbers for came from our calculations right here, these four, and they have to be followed or the parts will be made and then they won't, doesn't matter if I did my tolerance calculations. How do you do one place? You're going to do one place dimensions just like you do two place or three place. 
You're going to click on all of them that are in place, go to precision, and change that to one place to the right of the decimal point. So why do you do that? Because this can have a lot more tolerance. Like It's like the length of a car. Any car that rolls off the assembly line is going to be plus or minus so many inches. It's it's not, it's more aesthetic rather than a fit to something else. So we can loosen the tolerance so that manufacturing costs are lower. The tighter the tolerance, the more expensive something is. So nothing fits around the outside of this. Nothing, the depth really doesn't matter. I mean, it could be, you know, plus or minus 50 thousandths and it would not affect this part. And so in the height and the fillets. So that's why we've given them more tolerance than less tolerance. So when we make more places to the right, we've, we've tightened the tolerance. We've made it more expensive because of fit to something else. But when we make it looser, we've given them a lot more leeway that this is going to work every time, you know, in inspection, in manufacturing, they could cast this part on the outside, machine the, on the outside, machine the inside to be more precise. So you have more manufacturing options. You have more less parts to be re reworked and scrapped and you can also inspect them and and go no go gauges sometimes it's just cheaper we've actually lessened the cost by increasing or increasing the amount of variance we could also tighten the tolerance and pass the uh, pass the calculation tolerance you could, but you're making it more expensive, right? And we don't really, really what we want to do as designers is we want to give as much tolerance as possible so that manufacturing cost is less because I've seen people fired over pennies at Dell because you're creating millions of them and that's a lot of money. So, you want to make things as cost effectively as possible. And we do that with tolerances. But if we have to have something really tight, um, of course, we might make one or two dimensions, but we're trying to make as many as we can, as lenient as we can to bring the cost down. Yeah, you could make those tolerances on the inside tighter and the calculations would still work, but now you've made a more expensive part. Tighter, the more decimal, more places to the right of the decimal point, the more dollar signs you're going to see. So we tried to keep it within two places just to give plus or minus 20 thousandths. That's 40 thousandths overall. That's 10 sheets of paper. That's not a lot of tolerance. So if you, if you want to try, yes, you want to save money. Absolutely save money. So if you can cut costs for any company, you're the hero, right? You don't want to cause more cost in your production. All right, you guys, that's what I have for the V-clamp. I hope you enjoyed that portion of it. And stay tuned. I will send you your homework for next time. We're going to start on our next assembly, which will be the V-clamp. You can go ahead and start watching those videos and making those parts. And uh, I want you to get this done. You will have a week to turn this in. So don't, don't be so stressed. I know you have a lot more files to do in this, but we're getting toward, we've got, what, one, two, two or three more assemblies to do. So we got to get cracking. You guys get going, and thanks so much for your attention. You're welcome.